a sufficiently impressive to bring persons together in private assembly that such motives do exist in other areas and that secret societies today outside of our own sphere of influence are very powerful and very continuing and that these societies are for the most part similar in their purposes and objectives as those of Western Europe and America of 300, 400, or 500 years ago. In our way of life, we are not struggling for liberty. We are struggling, rather, for private freedom. In many countries, however, the struggle for civil liberty goes on against very desperate odds. Many countries are burdened with incredible internal confusion. There are new countries rising up today to attempt uh, their place in the sun with less than 1% literacy. Of the expansion of this type of activity as the only possible way of keeping tyranny from completely enslaving the entire social groups. And at this time we know of several rather despotic leaders who are in constant and mortal fear and terror, surrounding themselves with the most exaggerated methods of personal defense because of their fear of private assembly within their own regions and also their knowledge that this exists and their inability to ferret it out. One of the reasons they cannot discover these groups is because these groups are protected by the people in general. The people may not have the courage to belong to them or to advance secret causes against prevailing pressures, but they are sympathetic to these groups therefore cannot be induced to reveal them and will usually simply decline to discuss it or insist that as far as they know such assembly does not exist. It was private assembly which liberated Latin America not more than a hundred years ago. It was private assembly that resulted in the gradual rise of the rights of people throughout Europe 150, 200 years ago. It was private assembly that strongly advanced the cause of our own revolutionary war. It was private assembly that created the Republic of China in 1912. It was private assembly that advanced the freedom of most of the Far Eastern nations that finally achieve constitutional government. This secret assembly must therefore continue in as much as the need for it also continues. In our particular modern situation, we realize that there are large areas of the world today in which the ethical, spiritual, and moral needs of mankind are relatively ignored, where attitudes and processes are forced upon persons whose natures do not conform with such pressures. There has been a considerable enslaving of intellectuals. There has been a powerful trend against the rights of the individual to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And we may say that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, these words, this statement, was once the secret statement of a secret society. This statement moved Europe nearly uh, 200 years ago and brought about the tremendous change which was a powerful social advance for mankind. We know therefore that today behind barriers wherever tyranny exists there is a constant and desperate determination to resist. That these resistant movements arose in World War II 
in the form of the famous underground movements. These movements certainly were not religious, primarily, although the concept of religion moved with them. They were not essentially philosophical, yet they demanded obligations, and they tried and tested those who sought to join them. And these testings and trials were for the same purposes as ancient rites, namely to prove that the candidate could be entrusted with responsibility of knowledge, knowledge which, if misused, might destroy the other members of a fraternity. This type of thinking is going on strongly today. It is probably active in two-thirds of the world, and it is active toward ends which we here in America regard as highly desirable ends, ends leading to universal tolerance, universal education, universal opportunity, universal liberty. These are the essential principles of the modern secret society. Such societies also, of course, exist on purely specialized levels as your educational societies, your Greek letter societies, and things of that nature. These are usually honor societies, toward which the individual aspires in order that he may prove his unusual proficiency or advancement in some subject. But even today, most of these honor societies in areas outside of our own are bound into the general picture. And this general picture has become considerably confused in the last 25 or 30 years. During most of the 19th century, secret societies that had brought peoples to various degrees of security have moved and created from themselves leaders, for most leadership was backed by some pressure. Had it not been so backed, it could not have moved forward against an entrenched tyranny. These leaders were individuals apparently, but had they not received help of some kind, usually secret help, they would not have been able to survive to achieve the reformations which they accomplished. But during the 19th century, most of this pressure let down. It looked as though the world was moving forward inevitably and magnificently toward a better state of things. It is true that there were wars, there were troubles in those days, but these troubles were comparatively uh, isolated, one arising here, one arising there. And most of these troublous situations were envisioned as means of accomplishing a further advancement of man by removing some obstacle to that advancement or by binding divided and discordant groups into some larger and more comprehensive pattern. The general trend, therefore, was for the secret society to move into fields essentially less vital than that of an earlier date. We find them, therefore, strongly advancing on the levels of trade unions and guilds. We find the rise of various movements intended to improve and protect various crafts and arts. We also find the rise of benevolent and fraternal orders, or the gradual transformation of earlier societies into these specializations. The Hung Society in China, for example, after it had achieved the democracy, <coughs> turned to labor situations and the internal protection and advancement of its underprivileged classes. There was a respite, <coughs> and individuals believed that the great work had been accomplished, that man would never again fall under the kind of tyranny from which it had emerged in the long and difficult period from the Dark Ages. 
In the last 25 years, the situation has been almost completely reversed. Today, tyranny looms large. The rights of man have been undermined in numerous areas. Most of all, materialism is rampant among groups on the ground that it is only by the extinction of ideals that slavery can be perpetuated. Materialism leads inevitably toward the acceptance of slavery. It removes from the individual his vision of greater spiritual value and in this way takes away from him his basic impulse to defend and protect such value at all cost. So we have today a world which perhaps is not much better off in total than it was 500 years ago. It knows more, it is richer, and in some areas such as the Western Hemisphere, its progress continues at a reasonable rate. But for the rest of the world, life is closing in, and has closed in for a number of years. It has reduced its boundaries to medieval fortresses. It has divided its proje projects and purposes, and under the general name and term of me mechanistic progress, it has lost sight of most of the values that are real and dear to the private citizen. The family is attacked. The home is attacked. The right of private uh, assembly is attacked. The privilege of free vote is attacked. The right to worship, uh, to have convictions, is either attacked or ridiculed. And by degrees, uh, the private citizen is reduced to the state in which the need for private assembly is strongly re-emphasized. As a result of this condition, such private assembly is rising throughout these areas. Private assembly, in some instances, for private worship. And there are countries today where worship is not very different from the way it was in the catacombs under Rome during the time of the pagan Caesars. It is necessary to meet secretly in cellar and attic and to watch constantly for a traitor in your midst. It is hard for us to imagine that such things can exist today. But there are actually secret societies that have been created in certain parts of Eastern Europe for one purpose only the circulation among the members of a Western newspaper. Something which could and might very likely cause the most terrible penalty if any one of that little circle should betray the others. It is a little hard for us to imagine all this, but it is true. Now your secret society moving into a situation moves in with a tremendous traditional background. All through Eastern Europe, secret societies existed from before the beginning of the Christian era. These secret societies had long and illustrious histories of fighting for the right of these peoples to exist, to overcome the restrictions and limitations of arbitrary aristocracies. These secret societies struggled for freedom from serfdom, the establishment of citizenship, the right to possess property, the right to educate children, uh, the right to pray, uh, the right to read and write. These things were fought for with every ounce of courage that human beings possessed. There were numerous martyrs toward these ends, and some very hideous and horrible things happened beyond almost the imagination of modern man. He cannot see how anyone could so persecute another for such reasonable and commendable 
objectives. 